bill call to order the Board of Zoning Appeals. Would you please stand for the pledge? Jerry, would you lead us in the pledge? Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley. Veronica Buchanan. Here. Jerry Sartain. Here. Joe Machado. Here. Michael Rather. Here. Jared Barrett. Here. Zane Cantrell. Present. We have a quorum. Have the minutes from our last meeting. Are there any additions or changes in the minutes? If none, I move to approve. We have a motion that they be approved. Do we second. have a second? I'll second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. The minutes are approved. We have before us four, uh, three items today, and we'll start with the uh, first one. And after we get the information, we will have a public hearing on each one of them. The first one is a request by Andy Eaglehart, who is requesting a variance for leaf, relief of a five-foot front yard setback. What do you have on that, please? Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Mr. Chairman. Could I interrupt for just a second? <clears throat> um, this first applicant is a customer of mine out in the world. Uh, and given the potential conflict of interest, I will be abstaining from discussing or voting on this application. So noted for the record. You may proceed. Thank you. Application BZA 2017-48 involves the property located at 412 Old Orchard Drive in the Farmington subdivision. They are seeking variance relief of five feet from the front yard requirement of 40 feet in the property located in the RM residential medium density zone. Uh, this is the lot. It's it's being constructed upon now, and all the homes. There are multiple homes being constructed in this phase of Farmington, so we don't have any aerial showing uh, rooftops. However, uh, the home was uh, built or is being constructed. Uh, the at the time, and if you refer to the staff report. Uh, there was a footing and monolithic slab inspection that was performed and when we received this application we spoke with the building department to see how the encroachment with the encroachment the construction of the building was allowed to proceed it was questioned at the time of the slab uh, the footer i guess uh, inspection and they were reassured that the setback was being met and they were allowed to continue um, to construct the building and later in the process it was discovered that the building did e exceed the front yard setback so this is the home that's being constructed this portion right here of living area is the portion of the uh, home that ex uh, encroaches into the front yard setback now we posted a sign on the property we have not received any phone calls um, regarding this request uh, the request does not meet all of the criteria for variance requests, um, but I, let's see, this is the survey that was supplied by the applicant, and you can see that they uh, also indicated the front extent of the adjacent home, so you can see how um, the existing structure meshes with the two adjacent structures. Sadly, the aerials often help, but all of these homes are being constructed, so it, it offers us no help in this particular situation. And that concludes staff's presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this request? If you'll come around, please. Podium, give us your name and any additional information you want to share. My name's Andy Englehart. I am the uh, general contractor on the job. The only part uh, that's over 
extended is that small part in the front is that yes right? sir it's a uh, master bedroom closet okay and about what is the length of that 15 feet any other questions go are you building any more in that subdivision no sir this was a custom home and the homeowners actually purchased purchased the lot okay uh, so it's just a one-time deal in there all right any other question? Terry, did you have a question? Thank you. You may be seated. Can I make a general sure. comment? Go ahead. The uh, footing was laid out basically from the wrong point. It was pulled from the curb versus the pins. And it was actually set 42 feet back from the curb versus the pins. So the gentleman that laid it out, Nathan Foltz, made a error where he pulled the pins. And I did not catch it. And that's where he assured uh, Mark Russell that it was within the setbacks, and it, but there's a, that five foot mistake right there. So that's what happened in short. Well, thank you. I appreciate okay. you giving us that information. Any other questions? We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. We'll have a motion on it. To be approved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to be approved. I have second, a second it. Have a second. Call the roll on this. Uh, remember, Mr. Rather, we'll, we'll just ignore him on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Veronica Buchanan? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Jared Barrett? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. It is approved. The next item we have is a request by Michael Matt Rule, who is requesting a variance relief on the maximum floor error ratio of 20% and an off-site parking requirement. What do you have on that, please? Application 2017-49 involves the property at 47 East Jefferson Pike. It's a request for variance relief to the maximum floor area ratio of 20% and relief from the off-site parking requirement limiting distance to 400 feet from the main entrance. The properties in question are both zone RC, which is rural center, and RM, which is medium density residential. These are the two properties in question. On this portion of uh, the request, the application. The request is the applicant is proposing to build a two story educational area, a classroom area, and it will eliminate some of the parking and cause the floor area ratio of the existing site to exceed the 20% that's allowed for this particular property in the RC zone. The second part of the request uh, this parcel is also owned by Las Castas Baptist Church, and it's an 18 acre site, but they are proposing to establish a 42 space parking area to accommodate overflow parking um, on this particular site. Now we posted a sign on the properties and we have received several phone calls regarding the Barlow Lane sign and once we responded to uh, the inquiries uh, no one indicated that they had any opposition to the establishment of the parking lot here. So the parking space uh, lot is off-site from the main site and we do have a provision in our parking regulations that you can have off-site parking however it needs to be within 400 feet of the main entrance of the use that it's serving and it exceeded that by a bit so we've um, the applicant added that request to this particular um, variance relief request so this is the Barlow Lane site that the 42 space parking area will be established upon and the surrounding areas and home sites. Um, it, there are really no other options for them to locate any off-site parking. This is the nearest site that is av available to establish off-site parking. Um, and this is where uh, Las Casas and uh, Jefferson Pike intersect and then this is Barlow Lane picks up directly right immediately after that intersection and this is the site plan it's currently going under site plan review however it can't be approved until the you know the board of zoning approves uh, the variance request if they choose to do so 
So this is the, the classroom area that's being proposed. And they're going from, I believe it was 20% uh, to 29% or 0.29%. So. And that concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this request? If you'll come around, please, to the podium. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm the applicant, Matt Rule. Um, I am the civil engineer that's on the project and representing Las Casas Baptist Church. Um, yeah, just to get uh, basically um, what Danielle said, uh, we're looking to add an addition on to the existing Las Casas Baptist Church. There'll be some additional classrooms at the bottom of it that'll um, be for the children preschool, and then there's also going to be some additional classrooms on the second floor for um, Sunday school. Um, like she had mentioned, we're going to be removing some of the parking that on the lot to put the addition on. So um, in order to make up for the parking, we're going to be adding the off-site parking area, which does happen to um, not meet the minimum distance or maximum distance from the entrance of the existing sanctuary. Any questions? My only question was the parking, since it's off-site. People are going to be walking up and down that street to get back from the church to the parking lot? The church will actually have vehicles that will be picking people up in the parking lot and then bringing them to the church. That, that addresses, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions? You'll have a shuttle service, is that right? Yes. Yep. Very similar to a lot of what a lot of the churches do. That are, maybe that, that's a good thing. You don't have enough parking areas. I yeah, think. that's definitely a good thing. Any other questions? Thank you. you. May be seated. I'll entertain a motion on it. I move for approval. Oh yeah, we better have a public hearing. I've got that down. I want to do that. <laughs> we'll open this for a public hearing. For anyone who'd like to speak on this, if you'll come around to the podium, give us your name and any information. Thank you, Joe. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm Kenneth Summy. I'm the pastor of Las Casas Baptist Church, and I appreciate an opportunity to be considered this afternoon. We are very excited uh, that we need additional space uh, for our preschool and children ministry, uh, and that necessitating additional parking as well, and we're thankful for the property as close as we could be uh, with that acreage. I've been there for about five years as pastor, and uh, they purchased that 18 acres slightly before I came as pastor of the church, and so it's wonderful to have that uh, space uh, to uh, uh, expand, uh, but we would intend to have a shuttle ministry because of the the, part, the roads there. Uh, there's really no good pedestrian access uh, because of that Barlow Lane intersection especially, and so we would have some type of shuttle ministry from that additional parking, and our hope is in the future to have additional parking on that site, but initially uh, just those 42 spaces. Thank you. Anyone else? Close the public hearing. We have a motion on it now. I'll move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Have a motion to be approved. I'll second it. Have a second. Call the roll, please. Veronica Buchanan? Yes. Joe Michotto? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Michael Rather? Yes. Jared Barrett? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. The next item we have is a request by Robbie and Diane Dalton, who is requesting uh, a special exemption approval for establishment of the group child care. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2017-50 involves the property located at 3843 Shelbyville Highway, and they are seeking special exception approval for the establishment of a group child care home upon the property located in the RM zone. Uh, this was the former location of the Marshall Knob Baptist Church, and they uh, are wanting to convert uh, the existing church into a dwelling unit, and they have met with the building codes and planning to determine what would be necessary to do that. And once it's uh, converted into a residential unit, they would like the special exception approval to allow them to operate a daycare upon the property for up to 12 children. It's part of their long range plan to eventually rezone the property to allow for a larger daycare, but at this stage that they are only seeking approval for up to 12. Um, you've got the county quarry, uh, the four lane divided highway, you have 
a city-owned property, and I believe there's a cell tower across the street, and the, the convenience center um, is just east of this particular property. We posted a sign on the property. We did not receive any calls regarding this particular request. Uh, there is no issues or concerns regarding the ability of parents who are dropping their, or picking their kids up. They will not be backing out onto Shelbyville Highway. There's ample area upon the site to turn around and um, drive back out onto Shelbyville. Uh, these are, this is a floor plan of what the applicant submitted uh, as to how the interior of the church is going to be converted into both classroom area if this is approved and into a residence. So you'll, they have all the elements to make it, um, for it to be considered a dwelling unit. And they'll have to undergo all the required inspections for the conversion into a residential unit and also the state will inspect the property as well as the fire marshal if, if this is approved. And so this is the parking area and this is all gravel um, where people can turn around and pull out. And that concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this request? You'll come around please. Give us your name and any additional information. Good afternoon. My name is Robbie Dalton. Um, along with my wife, Diana, uh, we are um, proposing uh, to open a Christian daycare center in this particular location. We did uh, contact the, um, the church who owned the property. They have combined their congregation with, uh, with another here in town. And uh, that one's vacant, and we um, approached them with this uh, idea and this uh, possible um, conversion, if you will, from a uh, church to a Christian daycare center. They liked the idea of keeping it in um, that, that kind of uh, ministry type uh, situation. Even though this will be a for-profit uh, organization, um, our aim is to uh, make the tuition, make the, the daily, I'm sorry, the weekly um, amount that, that they have to pay much less than what they normally would pay in that area. We've done quite a few surveys, so we believe we can do that and, and still um, operate the, the daycare in a way in which it would be feasible. Questions? Who will be staying in the apartment or the living quarters? This is a uh, opportunity for us to to bring in some additional people, if you will, to this uh, to this business. My daughter, uh, Emily Dalton, who's in the audience today, um, just graduated in um, August from MTSU with a child welfare degree, and her desire, obviously, is to work with children and to to provide the the services and the expertise necessary to do that type of work and she will reside in the in the church question why not go center base why are you just stopping at 12 just curious there's some uh, state regulations uh, regarding that and uh, just like if this were not a church at all if it was just a standard house uh, that's the limit it would be for anyone who's doing this type of work uh, there are other stipulations other guidelines that you'd have to do to go over 12 so to start this operation in cooperation with the church, we're going to actually lease the building and we're going to um, have an agreement so that we can purchase it after one year, uh, assuming the business is viable at that, at that point, and then we'll convert it into a, a, um, uh, um, a more of a commercial operation, which I know there's, there's some guidelines that we'd have to meet to do that, but right now this is kind of step one in a long-term vision. I'm just concerned back to the apartment. I mean, the living quarters that you just have different people in and out of there with the kids. That's, you know, that was my concern. I'm sorry, could you ask that one more time? No, I was just concerned. That's why I asked the question about who will be in the living yes. quarters. Yes, ma'am. Because, you know, mm -hmm. any, any, anything can people. happen when you got different types mm. of individuals in the living quarters. No, this will not be a rented out space. We, our family will, a member of our family will reside there. She'll be working there every day. Uh, so they'll simply be going from one side of the building during the, you know, the evening hours 
to the other side of the building where she'll be taking care of the children, then back over to the other side. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So to, to help me restate what I thought I heard, whoever's living in the apartment will be the person that's taking care of the daycare. One person that's taking care, there'll be a multiple people there if, if and when we get to the 12 maximum. There are certain amount, there's certain state limits that you have to have so many adults in that situation. So she'll be the, at least one, that's certainly. So it will not be rented to someone no. other than someone no, no, that's no. doing that function? No, not at all. Thank you. Questions? Thank you. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. Do we have a motion on it? Move for approval, Mr. Chairman. Have a motion to be approved. Do we have a second? Second. Got a second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Veronica Buchanan? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Jerry Sartain? Yes. Michael Rather? Yes. Jared Barrett? Yes. Zane Cantrell? Yes. It is approved. Do we have any other business before the BZA? No, sir. Thank you, all of you, for being here. I hope it's been an enlightenment time for you, especially those that have been here for the first time. We'll, uh, we will adjourn. Thank you.